All right, guys. We are going to start ripping out this transmission, this whole leaky torque converter seal. Let's see if I can turn on the light on this. Maybe you guys can see up in there. Nope. Kind of tough. You guys will see it when I pull it out. Anyways, I already moved the heat shield. One of them, they're connected together. This one I just slid back. The other one's right there. Four eighths. One, two, wherever it is. One, two, buckle my shoe, whatever, four of them. And so my plan with this, I'm thinking, I'm gonna try and get away without pulling the exhaust. I gotta pull the exhaust on this side anyways to go get this welded. But I'm thinking I'm gonna try to unbolt that bolt right there. This bolt, the center carrier housing, bearing, bear, bearing center carrier bearing housing. And then, uh, and then remove from the transmission. And then hopefully I can slide that back enough so then like I can drop the transmission with no problems. But anyways, first I'm gonna put my tranny jack here, put my tranny jack there so I can support the tranny and I can start removing all of these brackets, get everything out the way so then I can start removing, undressing the tranny, whatever's connecting to the, whatever's connecting to the tranny that's gonna stay with the vehicle. I can start disconnecting and uh, we'll go from there. unbolting it from the tranny, leaving it bolted to the bracket. Okay. Take the rest of the bracket down. It's all filthy and gooked up under there. Okay. All right, that'll work for all of them. So now we will be removing the this exhaust bracket. Let me show you. So it's really dirty. These two. These ones. And these two, that'll get down out of the way. Then I'll unbolt the drive shaft from the output, from the transmission output. And then we will unbolt here and here. Drive shaft should give us some wiggle room to push back. And then we'll start removing like O2 sensors off, out of the way, tranny lines, shifter. There's a, there's a, ground strap right here on the side of the tranny and then uh, yeah I think we can and I'm pretty sure we can uh, just squeeze the tranny out never pulled one on this kind of car before but nonetheless we're gonna try that first all right 13 And uh, remember which way this goes. This side was, comes out first, the passenger side. There's like bushings in here, like they haven't fallen out yet, but like they will. I don't know if you guys can see that right now. They can and will fall out. Just remember the orientation. Okay. Hate working on dirty stuff. That part of the bushing right there. It's supposed to fold over and be connected to the other one. So, 
Yeah, figure that out later. Tens there. Oh, there's some big torxes there. Yeah, guys, that's gonna be E12s for the for the um, carrier bearing, center carrier bearing. These might be like T55s. Nope. T60. And you know what? I didn't even put the tranny in trans or in neutral, which I should have. But I'm gonna disconnect the. Uh, I'm gonna disconnect the. Uh, freaking brain's not working right now. The shifter, there it is, the shifter. Actually, let me show you guys. Okay, there you go. Alright, see this little tab right here? I'm just gonna go like this. I'm just gonna stick the screwdriver right up in here. And just enough to get that up and over. A little lip and care if we don't shoot this super far away. And bam. Got it. Okay. And then that will just come out like that. And then all the way back is park. See this will go, so let's go. Should be neutral right there, I think. Sure is. Awesome. Alright. Okay, it's gonna be 18 nut. Eighteen nut on the back. And a T60 on the front. And once again, guys, I've said this in the previous video, washer goes on the bushing. All the bolts go the same way. Also, it's freaking freezing today, guys. Sometimes these drive shafts can be a pain to disconnect from the flanges. We'll see. Oh, nice. Easy peasy. Show you guys what's going on so far. Okay. Got everything out, got the tranny lowered a little bit. So eventually we're gonna have to get those bell housing bolts. Oh yeah, also disconnect the battery. I did that before starting this, but check out my fresh new pan gasket. But yeah, alright. <clears throat> Oh 
find my message right now. There is a little push pin right here. Let's see if you guys can see that. Oops, that works too. Hard doing this one handed. Well, that works. Who needs that push pin anyways, right? Okay, well, I'm gonna need two hands to disconnect all these connectors. And these uh, O2 sensors are color coordinated. So you can't really mess them up. White goes with white. Kind of like in prison. Black goes with black. They're super brittle though, so be careful. It looks like another E12, and then we'll get these um, tranny, cool, tranny cooler lines, and then the sensor on the other side or the connector. <clears throat> This is going to make a mess, so make sure you catch what you can. It's going to be hard to catch anyways with the tranny jack in the way, but... Okay. For banjo fittings. There's also this, these are hard lines. So I'm gonna disconnect uh, and remove that, loosen that bolt and let these, let these move freely. I'm gonna use my E-Torx wrench, snap on. that bracket on the bottom as well. Where did I put that E10? There it is. There we go. That's a little better. All right, so for this side, we're gonna remove this uh, T30. And then this little plate will just slide out. That'll give us access to unhook the connector, pull that out, train line's already out. And then after that, we'll pop this cover out and then we'll start uh, unbolting the torque converter from the, from the engine. And then also, okay, right here too, we need the the dipstick uh, tube, which they don't give you a dipstick. It doesn't come with a dipstick, but it comes with the tube. You have to buy aftermarket dipstick because they were sealed for live transmissions back in the day. And then we should be able to drop this sucker. And 
Yeah, okay, sweet. Dang, it's on tight. I didn't unbolt that last time on the previous tranny service we tried to do on this. Everything was super tight. Big shout out to my homie Tyler for coming through and greasing these up. All right guys, so now pretty much what you gotta do, just try and uh, pry up, get this out of the transmission pan without, without messing too many things up. Just be careful, don't go too crazy. Don't go Hulk on that. No Hulk smash here. And now let's hit these uh, No be torque converter bolts Maybe We just got to get up in here should, should probably take off the skid plate. I think I can get in here anyways with the flex head So we just turn the crank watch in here and then unbolt and I keep turning and bolting repeat if I can feel what size that is, I forget. That's a big one. Um, let's see here. Try to turn it on. Nope, it's bigger than that. Okay, let's try again. Let's just try 22. I don't know if this will even give us room because there's a crossbar right here. I mean, this might give us a little better access, but no, not really. It's bigger than a 22. Try 27. 27 it is, guys. Okay. All right. See what we got here? We can turn the crank and then wash our head. Or bolt and the other bolt and there should be two four six maybe eight I'm not sure I forget I forget but yeah let's get those let's get those puppies out of there I'm gonna use air here actually let's see if we can it's gonna be loud this thing is loud all right we're just gonna go like this
I will try to remember to mute the sound on that one, but all right, then we're just gonna grab our thing here again. Bam. There it is. Careful, these Arab ones will knuckle bust you for sure. All right, so you guys get the idea. So now you guys can just kind of watch, I guess. Finally starting to get warm up in here. All right, where did I go here? All right guys, so we got the, you guys see me from there? So we got the torque converter unbolted. Everything's pretty much unbolted for the most part that I think we'll find out when we get further. So now we're gonna go to uh, removing the, the bell housing bolts. These can be kind of tricky sometimes, but, cause they're kind of hard to reach. I mean, just depends. They're just all around. You see there's one there. There's one up there, there. Not sure if there's one all the way on top either. Y'all, I like holding brackets and stuff too. So sometimes you can get back here. So we need more lighting. Don't know if you can see up there. But you just get a super long extension and just try and peek up there and zip them out. All the way around. And this, uh, this old girl should drop. I might just be able to get them off on the side. Yeah, there's some on top. Yeah, okay. What is that, E14s maybe? I think I already have that out somewhere. Yeah. This mix of stuff. Yep. All right, E14, so let's, uh, Let's get at it, I guess. Here's my damn, there it is. 38 wobbly. Definitely helps to have one of these. Especially if you have a locking extension, but I don't have a long. The one locking extension I have, I broke. In the previous uh, video, previous YouTube video. Don't know if this is gonna be long enough. Let's see if I can take you guys with me on this. I think I'm gonna have to hold this. And try to do it so I'm just gonna go right up to here. This is gonna be so hard one handed. There we go. Oh, these this side has a nut on. Both sides, I forgot about that. Oh, this one doesn't.
This is so hard one-handed. Normally I'd use my right hand to guide that socket. Alright, so there's two all the way on the top. Those I'm gonna use two hands with. Kind of gonna have to go by braille on this one. Same thing on this side. side that uh the dipstick tube is kind of in the way come on little girl About to just rip that one out by hand. It's my handy dandy flex head ratchet, wherever the hell that went. Where the heck did it go? Oh, it's right here. No, I got another idea. Let's see if we can go under the tube. Okay, I think that's gonna work. <clears throat> So close. Okay, right there. Let's see if this works. Why are you so tight?
I either broke my ratchet or I broke it loose. <laughs> Got it. All right, guys. So before I take these uh, bottom bolts out, actually, I gotta get these out with the nut here. I forgot to get the nuts off the back of these on the side here, these two on the side. Hate this extension. I'm gonna grab onto nothing. Seen better days. That's why locking extensions work really well in tight quarters. There it goes again. Because if this was a locking extension, this would just lock. It keeps falling in my bucket here. Long ones are on the side side, shorter ones on the top there. Oh, there goes the dipstick tube. That's on the dipstick tube. Okay, let's get the rest of these out. See, take the shorter ones, these longer ones, they're gonna be like on the like side side, let's uh, say like eight and nine o'clock, I guess you would say, the long ones. These are gonna go inside here. Okay. That should leave us with just these two down here. And okay. Oh yeah, I was gonna ratchet strap that. Make sure you don't trap anything that you don't want to come with the tranny. Okay, there we go. I think that's the last one. We're gonna have to be super careful of these tranny lines here. Let's see if we can. Oh, forgot one right here. There it is. 
that's the last one. Okay, so let's see if you guys can see that pretty good. I need to cut this rope down. So let's see if we can squeeze this puppy out of here or if we forgot anything. Then we might have to remove the drive shaft from the back to give us enough room to clear these lines here. You know, if I had someone to pull this line a little bit, you know what, bungee cord. I think the torque converter is trying to stay. There it is. Okay, should be clear now, minus this one line. Alright guys, sweet, might be kind of a pain in the butt to, with the lines that go back in but I'm going to disconnect them a little bit further on the way in probably, but yeah that's all she wrote right there. And you know I'm going to sign that right there. No rear main seal leak. It's looking pretty good, guys. So, what I'm trying to replace is back here so you can see the you can already see the fluid back there maybe. That's not too blinding for you guys in there. It's coming from the torque converter seal, so I'm gonna pull that out. It it can be pretty heavy for you guys. I mean, if if stuff's heavy for you guys, but it's normally full of fluid, so let's uh let's pull that out. I 
All right, guys, so here we go. Where do I want to put this on? Prepare. Probably just put it straight on the floor, I guess. All right, guys, this is going to make a mess. We didn't lose that much. Still all up in there. Well, all right guys, that's gonna be it for today's episode. But uh, yeah, so. All right guys, so I was sitting there looking, you guys see me? I was sitting there looking for that tor torque converter seal, right? I'm like looking in there, I'm like, where the hell is that thing, man? How, how are we gonna do this? All right? I'm like, I don't see it here. Look at this thing. It's right here. That's sweet, so that's gonna be easy. That's why when I didn't see it, I was like, man, is this thing even further in? Well, that's definitely our culprit right there. Oh yeah. Sweet, easy peasy. I'm about to just slam this one back in and uh, we'll see you guys on the, on the next uh, video. So once again, guys, Nope. Hey, make sure you hit that like, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that bell button. We're gonna keep the content coming. Like again, man, if you guys have any questions on any of this stuff, just uh, go ahead, reach out in the comments section. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll throw a vehicle up on the lift. I got two lifts here. I'll throw any of my uh, Benzes up on the lift so I can pinpoint. I'll send you guys individualized uh, videos, messages or whatever so you guys can, you know, if I left something out or whatnot, but um, yeah, so sweet. We're just gonna slam that back in and uh, slap this puppy back in and go. Once I sign my initials up on here, flex plate or flywheel, whatever you call it for automatics. But sweet, man. So uh, we'll see you guys on the next one.